Hello everybody, this is an introduction video on Mass Effects in 2014. Uh, specifically, we're going to look at the uh, the M-Cloth feature. Uh, I'm not going to go too far into rigid body uh, collections in this video, but this is going to be a, a nice tutorial that shows you a couple different ways to use the M-Cloth uh, option in Mass Effects for 2014. Uh, we begin by opening up the Mass Effects toolbar and if you don't have that toolbar available uh, in the gray area next to your main toolbar just right click and you'll see the Mass Effects toolbar that can be docked right up inside there. Now a little bit on the uh, toolbar here we're not going to do all of these um, icons in this particular lesson but the first lesson uh, I do want to show you the Mass Effects tools by opening that up we have a floating toolbar that can be docked off to the left side here. That's where I get real comfortable using it. That way you don't get it confused with the modify panels on the right. If you're using a dual monitor then you can simply move that over to the other side. The next thing we're going to have is three types of rigid bodies. And rigid bodies are objects that are not cloth. They're solid um, and, and they won't necessarily bend or break at this point in the demonstration. A dynamic rigid body uh, means that it's going to adhere to gravity. A kinematic rigid body means it's going to be animated inside the simulation. And a static rigid body is, means it's going to be locked in its general place and it's not going to react to gravity or anything like that. Uh, and you'll see how the three react here differently in a little bit. Next we have the M cloth option which is the t-shirt and we're going to be turning our flag into a cloth. And then, of course, we have several options here that we're going to look at at future lessons. But then we have our simulation tools, which are going to reset a simulation, play a simulation, and advance the simulation frame by frame so that you can analyze what's happening in the simulation. Mass Effects is a physics generator, pretty much. It's going to give your objects properties, uh, physical properties, that they didn't have before. It's going to acknowledge things like mass, gravity, and whatnot. Uh, and this particular lesson, I don't want to go too far into the physics end of it, but you will have to be uh, aware that uh, each object has a mass, and that higher the mass, the faster it's going to appear to fall towards the Earth and whatnot. Now, once we start running a simulation, a simulation is not an animation. It's sort of a preview of the animation. Once a simulation is good and you're happy with it and it looks good, then you're going to do something called baking, where you're going to take frame by frame of the simulation and convert it into keyframes, which will then be visible on the timeline, and then that can be rendered out. While we uh, start to look at our first project, there is one role that you have to acknowledge inside uh, the simulation world, and that is that your standard grid here in the perspective view is representing the zero point uh, in, in, for instance, in the y-axis here. That is pretty much going to be the baseline of the floor in your simulation. So anything below that is not going to re react as if it would in real life where anything above it will adhere to gravity, wind, and whatnot. So always build your models above the grid line, above the tic-tac grid line. And uh, we can remove that grid by hitting G on the keyboard, but I'm going to leave that out as a reference. I've simply went out and made a cylinder, which is going to act as a flagpole. So I'll go ahead and call that flagpole. And then I have a flag, which was a plane, and uh, that plane had uh, 20 by 20 segments. We want to have some segments in there because this is going to act as cloth. And the more vertices we have, the smoother the cloth will look. However, don't overkill it. Don't go too far because then the simulation will take longer and you'll actually run into collision issues. So uh, a decent mesh. And you'll want to apply any materials to that mesh before you actually bake the simulation in there. So I have a Jolly Roger flag here as my example. Now, the, uh, the next step, what we're going to do is to introduce these objects with properties into Mass Effects. I'll begin by selecting the flagpole, and I'm going to make this a rigid body. I'm going to 
select a static rigid body. I don't plan on animating the flag at this point, so I'm going to keep it static and I'm just going to lock it into its virtual space inside my Max scene. Next I'm going to select the flag and we're not going to apply a rigid body to the flag because the flag is actually cloth. Instead we're going to apply the M cloth, which I call modifier. It shows up in your modifier list and uh, it's visible here in the modify. You'll see that there are several settings that we're going to look at here on how to make the cloth react. Pretty much we're ready to run a simulation already. We have two objects designated as part of the simulation. I'm going to hit play and I'm going to watch the simulation. What happens is my flag falls off the pole to the ground and then lays flat. The simulation will continue until I pretty much stop the simulation and reset. Now why did the flag fall? Naturally, now that the object has been given the cloth modifier, it has a, um, it has a mass. And that mass may not be very big, but for the most part, it is acknowledging gravity, so it's going to fall towards gravity. The pole did not fall towards gravity because it's a static object. It's locked in its place. If it was a dynamic object, that pole would also fall to the ground. Next, what we have to do is designate an area to anchor the flag to the pole so that it drops because of gravity but stays connected to the pole. We do that over in the Modify panel underneath the M cloth. We're going to open up the Vertex option. And when we open up the Vertex, we now have the ability to select individual vertices and, and lock them or give them particular properties in the simulation. We're going to highlight the vertices on the end of the flag that would be connected to the pole and we're going to make a group. We're simply identifying these particular vertices as a special group and I'm going to call it um, fixed. You could call it attached. You can call it anything you want. It's just identifying that these, this group of vertices is fixed or is going to be connected to that post. Going to use node. That node is going to fix that to this anchor. Let's see if that fixes our problem. There we go. Now the flag is actually acknowledging the attachment to the post. But we're still running into some other issues here. Our flag looks kind of cardboard-like. So, what I want to do is I want to add some properties to this flag that are going to make it a little bit more clothy, so to say. Uh, I can do that by going into Modify with, the, with the, the flag selected. And I can adjust the density, but I'm not going to really mess with that right now because I do want the density up a little bit. What I'm going to really do here is add some stretchiness. I'm going to do a 0.5 on stretchiness and a 0.5 on bounciness. Now, when I actually run the simulation, you should see the cloth is a little bit more cloth-like. It actually is kind of moving and bouncing off the flagpole, and for the most part, I'm pretty happy with that. Now, this scenario here, it is stretching out the flag. I'll maybe take the stretchiness out, take that down to maybe like a 0.1, and that's going to suck it up inside there a little bit more. The bendiness is going to give it that ability to kind of flex a little bit. We could also lower that stiffness. But I am pretty much ready to go with adding my next feature, and that is wind. I want the cloth flowing in the wind. And because there's no wind in the scene, that could be a problem. To create wind, we're going to use the basic wind under the space warps. The force we're going to use wind. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drag the icon and the icon points in the direction that the wind flows. I'm going to go ahead and pull the, the wind kind of at a slight angle here but behind the flag so that it kind of blows it this way out. Now, by default your wind is probably set at a strength of one and you may have to increase this number. The more you increase it, the more wave, more flex you're going to have in there. I'm going to throw a very hard number and then I'm going to put a 200 in there for now, which might be a little much. And I'm going to take a turbulence of one. The wind turbulence obviously is going to 
create the turbulence in the in the mesh that's going to be kind of wavy. Now this can also be animated. You can auto key the strength over time. So maybe you want the flag just kind of laying there and then the gust of wind comes along or the frequency or the turbulence changes over time. For the demonstration purposes, I'm going to keep it real simple and just leave the wind go at a normal setting. Now, if you do the simulation now, you're not going to see a difference, and that's because the cloth has to acknowledge the wind. You don't link them, but inside the properties of the cloth, you are going to find an area up here called forces, where you have to add the force you want to the scene. So we can add wind and drag and, and, and grab, well, we already have gravity, but we can add various forces that are going to change our simulation. Now when I go ahead and do a preview of my simulation, you'll see that my wind is very intense. It actually looks like a storm's brewing here, but the flag is reacting to that wind. Now what I can do is go in and maybe cut my strength down to 100 and hit play and you'll see that the flag is a little more subtle. Okay, last but not least, to conclude this video tutorial, I want to show you how to bake this and actually be able to render it out. Right now you'll notice that when you move the timeline, the animation does not occur. There is no animation here. We have to do something called baking. Baking can be found over here in the actual Mass Effects tools, and you'll notice that uh, the second icon, Simulation Tools, allows you to simulate as well. Once you're happy with the simulation, for instance, I may want my simulation to go up to 300 frames. So once I am happy with how a simulation is reacting, and I don't have any collisions, I don't have the post poking through the flag, I can go ahead and hit Bake All, and that's going to take every object Mass Effects related inside the scene and convert its simulation into a animation. Now if I only want one object to be acknowledged, such as the flag, I can do a Bake Selected. When you choose Bake Selected, you're going to see a series of keys generate, and there is going to be a time frame there that you're going to have to wait for. Uh, be patient. Don't disrupt it, uh, obviously, um, unless you see a problem, and then you'll have to undo it or go back and do an uh, unbake selected. But I'm pretty happy with how the results are showing up here. Once it is done, you're going to notice that the flag starts off perfect, and then the wind kicks in. One of the things that you could probably do to help fix this is to do a frame simulation and bake the first frame. Then rerun the simulation and that wind will react to the flag that is bent as opposed to the one that's up here. We could also just edit this out in uh, post-production and maybe take out the first five frames as well. But now you'll see that that object has keys. Now don't delete those keys because then your animation will go away. But we can now go over and hit play in the timeline and you'll see that the animation has occurred. Now we can render out our final, final Jolly Roger flag and that'll conclude uh, part one of the Mass Effects cloth tutorial uh, for this course.